So what, what the brother mentioned is about bad omen. And in, in Arabic, it is a tatayur. A tatayur meaning it's a bad omen. There's a good omen and there's a bad omen. So bad omen is the tayur. Uh, or a tasha'um is another word in Arabic. And uh, this is mentioned in, uh, in three places at least, uh, as he uh, has uh, pointed out. So in Surah uh, An-Naml, uh, verse uh, 47, where the people of Salih, they told him uh, that, أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم طيرنا بك وبمن معك We have bad omen with you and those who are following you. This is the people of the Prophet Salih. And, uh, and then in the, uh, also with the Pharaoh and Musa in, uh, in Surah Al-A'raf, verse 131, أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم الحسنة قالوا لنا هذه وَأَنْ تُصُبْهُمْ سَيَّ يَطَّيِّرُ بِمُوسَى وَمَنْ مَعِهِ That means when, uh, when there's a good thing, then they say, this is for us. And when there's something happening bad to them, they say, oh, this is the bad omen of Moses and his people. And, uh, and then the other one, which is uh, the Surat uh, Yasin, which is the verse number 18, uh, it is the, this village which is thought to be Antakya, and the, the, the prophets came to them and told them about worshiping Allah, and then they said, you are nothing but humans, and they said, no, we are prophets, and then uh, the, the response was, أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم قالوا إنا تطيرنا بكم لأن لم تنتهوا لنرجمنكم ولمسنكم منا عذاب أليم that you, we have a bad omen about you, and if you don't stop, we will stone you to death, and you will receive from us great uh, punishment. So all of these, the answer is, no, it is your bad omen. It is, uh, it is not, uh, it is not something that is related to our message. Now, uh, Bad omen is something that is historical, but it still is, does exist, and even among Muslim communities, let alone non-Muslim communities. So pre-Islam, a lot of the Arabs uh, were very much attached to these things, uh, where, for example, if they want to go and travel to a place or get married or do a business transaction, they have certain things they do. One of them is they go to a kind of a nest of a bird or a group of birds or so on, and then they come and make them fly. You know, they come and scare them or so on, and they, they make them fly. And they see if it goes to the right, that's a good omen, or that's a good thing that, okay, I will go ahead. If they, when they fly, they go to the left, they say, oh, this is a bad thing, uh, then I'm not going to go. Uh, or they go to an animal and then, you know, scare the animal and they see which direction they go, or if the animal tries to charge to them or run away with them. All of these are related to what birds and animals and all of these that they associate. Or if they, if they, uh, if they see a, a crow or hear a, uh, an owl or all of these things. Until now, I mean, even myself growing up in a, in a Muslim country, my, uh, you know, some of the myths, I, I heard it when I was young, and especially from my grandparents who are, you know, uh, they come from a little, uh, uh, the, the less educated generation of Muslims, uh, as we talked before. Uh, Islam went into a, a, a sleep for uh, generations, and only uh, there was more education and literacy in the last several decades. So I, I recall, you know, like uh, one time I, I was with my grandfather and we wanted to go out to walk and then I sneezed and he said no sit down and then I sneezed again he said okay now we can go and I was I was kid you know I was still I still remember that what 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 is that and so you know this is among Muslims and let alone uh, among non-Muslims there are a lot of people who have bad omen with uh, Friday the 13th 
or the number 13, and even among, uh, you know, uh, Muslims and so on. So then this bad omen is existing, was existing and still exists. Now, uh, what uh, the Quran is teaching us is what the Prophet Sallallahu is teaching us, that there is no bad omen in Islam. This has nothing to do with Islam. And this is only things related to sorcery, magicians, jinn, shayateen, and things that are not part of Islam. And um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provides these examples in the Quran to also demonstrate what, uh, what the brother was mentioning, that they, they find an excuse to get away from conf confronting truth, the truth that those prophets are coming with. It is an inconvenience to them. So what do they do? The best way to hide? Oh, this is a bad omen. That means, you know, whatever it's happening, whatever you're talking about, this is a bad omen. So then it is a propaganda. It is a way of propaganda against the prophets. So that then all of their followers will say, oh, yeah, bad omen, bad omen. And even, even in, uh, you know, in, in Christianity, in the Dark Ages, you hear a lot of stories about this that was practiced by the church itself. You know the witch hunts, every any you know anything that is uh, uh, scientifically valid uh, could be attributed to a bad omen and 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 so on and so forth. Um, so Alhamdulillah that Allah guided us to Islam and guided us to the truth and made everything clear and and addressed it even in uh, these things as bad omen or good omen or or so on and so forth. The uh, the way that those uh, those prophets were persecuted is in many ways you know they were punished they were uh, exiled or, or or sometimes killed and in this case they were putting them in a, in the in the in the crosshair uh, in terms of you are the reason that we are having bad luck uh, so even mentioning the issue of bad luck is not part of Islam or having today is a lucky day, that's not part of Islam because that's a type of a, um, of a of an omen that, oh, today is a bad day or a bad luck or good luck or something. No, all of it is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And uh, Islam tells us whenever you feel like there's these thoughts, you just go ahead, ignore that thought. Uh, this is a bad day or this is a bad omen or I don't like uh, you know, the sign that I'm getting from this or that, unless it is related clearly to Islam or Islamic teaching, things that are very clear that are harar, ha haram or halal, then everything else should be, uh, should not be followed and having this superstition. That's basically what it is. Um, the Prophet Sallallahu the beauty of him, of him and his teaching and his character is that he would always uh, be positive even when somebody comes with a bad name he would say no your name is so and so and change it to a, a positive like some people name their sons or daughters in a, in a negative way and he doesn't like it this is of course in islam where people you know were changing their names if, if it was haram to say it and so the prophet in, in some case said no your name is so and so so that means change your name of course they didn't have to go to the uh, records of the city and, and change it. All, all you need to do is change my name. Okay, this is my name now. Um, so uh, uh, the, um, the, Allah, uh, the Prophet Sallallahu also had always a kind of a positive view of we will do this. We will be successful. We will have a good you know, uh, harvest or anything. That is something that the Prophet Sallallahu uh, strongly encouraged. And he prohibited. He said, no okay and no going seeking uh, uh, the sorcerer or or the uh, astronomer today like what they call themselves astronomer they're not really astronomer I mean not astronomer what's the what's the word uh, that they would say for somebody who is uh, going to tell you what your future is or 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 the, uh, yeah or or doing or doing any of the things related to magic and uh, the Prophet ﷺ said, whoever seeks 
seeks any of these and believes in it, you know, goes to a sorcerer or goes to somebody who is, uh, you know, a tarot reader or whatever, all of that stuff, and believes them, then they have become uh, kafir. That means they have become disbelievers of what the uh, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed. And in some hadith, the Prophet said, his prayer will not be accepted for 40 nights. That's a, a hadith sahih, rawahu muslim, that whoever comes to those. So uh, so the treatment for this is to always make tawakkul on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Always, never, ever think that this person or this thing is going to give me bad omen. Absolutely not. Always say, I am depending on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah, Allah, he is the creator. He is my creator. He's creator of that animal, that human, and that 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 whole thing. And that's why I believe in him and I am making tawakkul on him. And never, ever have second thoughts. And these second thoughts can come. But the, the, the treatment is to just uh, go ahead and do the thing that you do, regardless of whatever these thoughts come uh, to you about, you know, uh, things that uh, might be bad, omen, and so on. So... Uh, to conclude in my thought about this and what uh, why I liked uh, the, this, this beautiful uh, example or examples in the uh, in the ayat of how at that time they uh, confronted the prophets with this uh, stigma. You know, they wanted to stigmatize them. You are bad luck. And yes, all of these three groups that are mentioned were destroyed. Absolutely. Pharaoh, he and his followers were drowned. Uh, the Qawm uh, Salih, they all were uh, destroyed. And then the other group, which is in uh, uh, the, uh, the city of Antakya and Surat Yasin, where the, the, the prophets came, there were three prophets, and then they came, there came a man advising them after after these three prophets and they they killed that man and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with one scream from the angel they were all dead uh, as a punishment as well and interestingly yes all of those three use that and what does that tell us also that those people are beyond repair those people who are going to that extreme of accusing their prophets not just the prophets the people who follow them are beyond repair that they are uh, you know, they are going to be destroyed. So I, I, I want to, uh, you know, stop here and see if um, if this kind of addresses the topic uh, that was raised. Now, in today's world also, uh, we still have some kind of perspective or some aspects of this superstition, although not clearly as superstition, as uh, a stigma association of people who are believing in the character of the Prophet Sallallahu So similar to those people who were accusing their prophets of being bad omen, today, for example, a lot of people associate Muslims as being bad to their communities. Why? Well, misinformation, uh, stigmatization, association with terrorism, Islamophobia, you name it. All of that is a way to target this community as a whole by those who are um, not wanting Islam and, it, and the truth and the message that it has and the teaching of the Prophet ﷺ to prevail because it will undermine them. It will undermine their businesses or it undermine their uh, uh, you know, what, what they have now in one way or the other, because what Islam brings is justice, social justice, women, women's rights. It, uh, you know, the wealthy has to give the, the needy uh, that, that there is no um, uh, unfairness happening. There is no other aspects, for, for example, uh, you, uh, you know, taking advantage of those who uh, are, weaker and so on and so forth. Uh, these are some of the message being kind and, and being merciful, being compassionate, uh, not being greedy, 
All of these are the messages of the Prophet ﷺ. How he behaved, how humble he was, how kind he was, and a simple life that he lived, and not overspending, not being a miser, uh, helping everyone that ask help. All of these are characters, good characters. There's nothing wrong with it. There is nothing of the nature of the propaganda and the misinformation that people associate with Islam and Muslims and even the Prophet himself. We know all of these people who make cartoons about the Prophet, peace be upon him, uh, mischaracterize him as evil. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, uh, bless him uh, with, 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 uh, with all of this information to undermine him, his followers, and his message. So there is similar things, but in a different light, it might be not super superstition. Uh, and it's not just really, uh, this, this is a, a way of protection for people or attack that is not limited to Muslims, even look as immigrants. Uh, a lot of people, oh, the immigrants are bad omen. They take our jobs. They're bad for our business. They, they, you know, they're sitting, taking the taxes that we are doing and all of that uh, misinformation to uh, undermine and stigmatize a community based on their color, ethnicity, or even just immigrant status, for example, in, in the U.S. and in, may, in many other places. So the lessons we have in the Quran, as I mentioned, are lessons to learn from historically and apply it. It's not just stories for, for no reason. And that is really the beauty of the Quran and what we learn from it over and over.